artificial intelligence is one of, if not the hottest topic in the business and tech worlds right now. And art is everywhere as interest and collections continue to grow. Young artists are making names for themselves while enthusiasts are constantly searching endlessly for art that they like. Now, that search, that connection, sure, it's been made easier with technology. You no longer have to walk into physical galleries and discover an artist. You now have the internet and social media to help bridge that gap. But what's not discussed is just how long, how hard, and how tedious that gap can be for both enthusiasts and the artists themselves. Artists are struggling to stand out in a competitive field and enthusiasts, possible buyers, they have a lot of sorting and searching to do in order to possibly get connected to that artist that they like. And that's where Nala comes in. It's the first true AI-powered art platform that's bridging the gap between data science and artistic expression. But don't take this from me. Here's Nala founder Ben Gulak discussing Nala and the feedback that he's gotten so far. So NALA stands for Networked Artistic Learning Algorithm, and the easiest way of explaining it, it's basically like Spotify for the art world. So just like how Spotify knows what kind of music someone wants to listen to next, or YouTube knows what kind of videos, or Netflix knows what kind of movie you want to watch, we created that same technology for the art world, able to make highly personalized recommendations to art lovers, showing them artwork that they're most likely to genuinely love. So I, uh, I started building NALA almost 18 months ago, and when you're using AI technology, one thing that you you really need is a large data set. In order to train and make good recommendations, you need to have a really robust you know, database behind you. So I spent almost a year building what we say, pretty accurately say, is the world's largest art database. We've collected virtually every piece of publicly available art data point out there that we can. We have millions of artworks in our system. And now that we've opened up to actual artists registering on the platform, we're seeing the number of registered users grow by the hour. People are now signing up and actively using Nala. And it has to be asked, what has the feedback been so far from both artists and enthusiasts? We've been registering users for six weeks now and the feedback's been pretty incredible. Almost every artist, and I can say this myself, uh, I used to paint before I went back to university. I sold my work through a bunch of galleries. I saw how the industry worked from an insider's perspective. I've sold artwork for other artists. And almost every artist you talk to has some horror story that they've dealt with with dealing with galleries, whether it's waiting for money, trying to get their artwork back, not having their work displayed properly. And if they're trying to sell on social media, Instagram like wants artists to become movie stars now. They're doing reels, they have to videotape, they have to jump through all these hoops just to have their work seen. So the idea that we can use this sort of machine learning, artificial intelligence technology to help the artists, we're not creating generative art, we're not replacing artists, we're actually helping real artists have their work seen by the most likely buyers, is a game changer. And we're, I, initially I thought we'd only get feedback or we'd only get you know, sort of emerging artists, artists just getting started in the industry. We're having really high profile artists signing up, you know, artists that work with multiple galleries, have their work you know, price point, I think our highest pay, price piece that's been uploaded is $75,000 now. We're getting like, very established artists saying, this is really cool for the industry and I actually want to help promote it, help get on board, how can I help make this bigger? Because uh, it has the potential to really be a force for good in the art world. And Ben Gulak is a man on a mission. As he said, after years of working on the inside, he saw what the industry was like, the insider's perspective. And he looks to be taking that experience and making it fuel for the fire behind Nala. Here he is discussing how Nala came about. I, I've always been a really creative person. I, when I was little, I went to art camp in the summer. I took art every year through elementary school, high school. I did a fine arts program abroad in Italy for almost a year where I was doing painting. And then I switched career paths and I went into engineering. And uh, I missed having that creative outlet. So I'd started painting again. And uh, I started, I did it to de-stress and I didn't want to have the artwork sort of collecting dust in the basement. I thought that'd be really depressing. So I started selling it and I reached out to some galleries and I got lucky and at one point had 15 galleries that were carrying my work. So my work really did get out there and when I decided to go back to university to study computer science the idea was I wanted to do my own thing after but the in the tech industry almost everyone now seems to want to go work for Facebook or go work for Instagram or one of the big tech companies and I, uh, I thought you know there's really a potential to combine my art experience with this technology because you can't get a more archaic industry than the art world I mean it really hasn't changed much in like thousands of years we have these galleries that are the tastemakers. They keep almost 98% of artists out of the gallery space. 
the buyers go into a gallery hoping to you know be shown something that they'll like but they're seeing such a tiny sliver of the marketplace that uh, there's this like massive market potential of all these artists that you know haven't even really been seen yet outside of their local art markets or local communities. And for those wondering how Nala has been financed, Ben Gulak explains not only this, but how those interested can participate in the movement itself. This is actually this is something I'm very proud of. The Nala today has actually been funded by artists. When I went back to university, I didn't have the ability to, to keep painting myself, I was studying all the time, but I started putting artists whose work I'd met or I'd come across over the years into galleries I had relationships with uh, and selling their, selling their work, almost acting as an agent. And uh, over the years I put together a sort of a roster of artists that I was re representing and selling and the money from these sales actually is what's financing Nala right now. So we can say on our website we have this you know, thing at Nala built by artists for artists and it, it really is more than just a catchphrase. The people that are you know the earliest adopters and what I learned you know through selling other artists work is it's just getting the right exposure. It's having the artwork seen by the, the right buyers is exactly what Nala is trying to do on a much larger scale. Where we can take any artist's work and find the most likely buyer for them, shortening the, you know, the process of getting a sale and hopefully increasing the likelihood of a sale happening. So there it is, Nala, a unique system that redefines connections between creators and enthusiasts. And the only question that must be asked is the following, what does the future hold for Nala? Once again, here's founder Ben Gulag. So I think one of the things for the longer term vision of Nala, besides trying to change the way art, how artists and art lovers connect and find each other, is really change the way the art market operates right now. For example, um, as I mentioned, only like 2% of artists ever make it into galleries. Many of these galleries will have multiple locations in different cities. They'll sign their artists up to exclusive contracts. So if you walk into a gallery in New York or London or Paris or any other sort of big cultural hotspot, you'll see the same artist names displayed over and over again. The galleries have an almost monopolistic control of the galleries, of their artists, and the sale prices that they have. So they can tell buyers, oh yes, this is a good investment, their price will go up in six months, or they're doing a solo show in Mykonos this summer. And the art buyer feels like they're getting a good deal, or that they're getting insight into the market. But what you're really seeing are these like little micro bubbles of monopolies that don't really reflect, A, the entire talent pool, or even, you know, that genre of art specifically. And by not actually having exposure to sort of all of the talent, really limits your, limits your choices. And our goal is to create or broaden the art market up so it really does operate more as like a free market where you know, sort of the cream does rise to the top, the best talent does do really well. And in our case, you know, we can use things like price and genre and materials and mediums to filter out to make sure people are seeing things that they will, you know, that sort of fit their preferences, but they're going to see talent from a much broader pool than is currently accessible right now. And I think that's going to have, you know, assuming we hit a critical mass and we actually like grow, um, I think it can have a really profound impact in how the art market operates.